believe there's some wonderful things. This is our first uh, edition of uh, what the Lord directed me to just call our pastor's Bible study. And I uh, want to welcome all those that are watching online, everyone that's here with us present in the sanctuary. And uh, we want to begin over here in the book of Psalms, chapter 37. And uh, the format for these teachings will just be what we're saying, just studying the Bible. And uh, we'll pray at the end of uh, these sessions. And we're going to be dealing with this uh, subject of prayer, uh, especially in the, the beginning of this, uh, this first session. And uh, the reason for that is, you know, Brother Hagin used to say this, Kenneth Hagin, he would say that the reason that some people are not effective in their prayer life is they try to put all uh, kinds of prayer in a sack and just shake it up. And he said that uh, obviously that's not going to work. I mean, the Bible talks about different types of prayer. It talks about uh, supplication, uh, the prayer of agreement, the prayer of faith, the prayer of intercession. And uh, we want to look here at some things because in Psalm 37, we see a key. And Psalm 37, verse 23, and notice that it says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. So he says, The steps of a good man are ordered or directed by the Lord. And so, where prayer is concerned, I have learned that there are steps that the Lord will give us. Our job is to allow the Lord to direct the steps. This is, this is in my opinion, where sometimes people miss it. Because people will come and they'll say, well, I want you to pray with me about blank. Well, I mean, we can pray about that. We can agree about that. We can even, uh, uh, you know, look at the word concerning that. But very often what is, is overlooked or missed are the steps that the Lord is directing me to take. When he uses this word ordered here, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his ways. The word ordered there, it can also mean established or to establish. So uh, when I'm facing a challenge, it's vital that I allow the Lord to direct the steps that I take, to establish my steps. Another, another scripture says the Lord will establish his going. All right? So, when we look at this, we understand something. That believing is not just, or praying, is not just one size fits all. Uh, you know, there are uh, certain garments, hats, you know, things for, you know, you'll see in the store and they'll say one size fits all. Well, I mean, it doesn't really. I mean, it says that, but it, it kind of, one size kind of fits all. <laughs> but, uh, so believing is not one size fits all. And here's why. The Lord will direct you at times, uh, first of all, how to pray. How, how do I need to pray here? Uh, because... I've learned over the years someone will come and say, I want you to pray with me about this. Well, I need to take a moment and find out how do we need to pray? How do we need to direct this? Uh, secondly, what to say. So how, how to pray, what to say. And we'll get into how this came about. And thirdly, the exact scriptures that we're to stand on. Remember that there are people that will say, well, prayer is the most important thing. No, it's not. No, it's not. The Word is the most important thing. Because if I don't have the Word, I don't know how to pray. If I don't have the Word, I don't have anything to pray about. I don't have anything to pray with. I don't have anything to take to the Lord. Because you'll remember, He said, put me in remembrance of my Word. All right? 
Well, that's not because God forgot. It's that faith spring comes from the Word. Sp faith springs from the Word. And if I'm going to pray in faith, I've got to be praying the Word of God. All right, in, in whatever area it may be. It may be in the, in the area of healing. It may be in the area of my children or the area of my finances or uh, my ministry. I know we have many ministers that watch our live stream classes that we do. Well, if I'm believing God, for instance, in the area of healing, then I don't want to just go to the Lord and ask Him to heal me. I mean, I, I can, but I go and I say, Lord, I'm, I'm coming to you in the area of healing based on what you said in your word. And your word says that you're the God that heals me. Your word says that with your stripes I was healed. Your word says no sickness, no disease will come near me. Your word says that you'll bless my bread and water and take sickness and disease from my midst. See, when I approach the Lord in that manner, then I'm, 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 I'm going to him on the basis of his word. This is what your word says. And your word is a covenant sealed by blood between me, your child, and you as my father. And you said that if I would ask anything, 1 John, anything according to your will, which is your word, you hear me. And I know that if you hear me, you said I would have what I ask of you. All right. So the point is, is I need to always approach my prayer for anything with the word of God. So. Prayer is not the most important thing, but yet it is indispensable. So he will tell me how to pray, what to say. And when I say what to say, I don't mean what to say when you pray, but what to say, how to answer the circumstance. All right? And then finally, thirdly, the exact scriptures that I'm supposed to stand on. You know, I've told the story over and over again of the 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 dear brother and his wife that are, that are still with us, idol members of our staff in the Kansas location uh, for the whole fellowship, uh, Brother Jim Molson, and uh, they were going through a, a physical challenge that uh, Kerry was facing, his wife, and I called him one day and I said, what's the good word? He said, well, Kerry's healed and whole, and I said, based on what scriptures? And it's not an indicator that he was not a man of the word or not believing God, but yet it had never crossed his mind. I need to have something in my ammunition folder uh, that I'm standing on. It's, it's not enough to just say, uh, you know, I'm healed and whole. Well, based on what? What gives you the faith to believe that? What gives you the certainty? All right? Uh, does that make sense? I've got to have the exact scriptures that I'm standing on. Now, there are times that the Lord will give you a phrase or a word that you're to keep speaking about the situation. All right? A phrase or a word that you're to keep speaking about the situation. Now, I'll go through how this occurred. Uh, two years ago, or, well, a little less than two years, about uh, one year and six months, uh, Pastor Michelle and I adopted our uh, granddaughter Liliana and uh, of course she's she's ours now we adopted her but when we knew we were going to have to go to court for that uh, for her adoption the Lord gave me this phrase this is what he said he said this whole adoption process will go without a hitch that's what he said to me in my prayer time all right now why is that so important that became what I would answer any thoughts with that were contrary to what we were believing for. No, this whole adoption process will go without a hitch. Now, no matter what it may have been, you know, that the, the judge, uh, a, a person coming from the outside, another family member, whatever it was, if that thought would come up that this was going to go uh, south, it was not going to go the direction that we were believing, then this is what I would say. No, this whole adoption process will go without a hitch. Amen. That became what I would answer. It will all go without a hitch. And here's why. Because the devil will do everything he can to get you to focus on what might happen. What could happen. Well, you know, you're, you're saying that you're healed, but what if you go to the doctor and they give you a bad report? Well, but if you've heard from the Lord about what to say, all right? 
I, I talked about one time in healing school here, a physical challenge that I was going through, and the enemy, the enemy was just bombarding my mind with thoughts of what if you die and what if you leave your family. And you know, there were times it seemed like it could be very real. There were times it felt like that was a very real possibility. But the scripture and the word that the Lord gave me from the book of Psalms was just simply, I will not die but live. That's it. That, that, that became what I answered that circumstance with. All right? And, and so when the enemy will try to say or try to get you to focus on what might happen, remember that's all he's got is what might happen because he cannot create anything in your life that you won't allow him to create. People will say, well, the devil did this and the devil did that. Well, he did it because he had permission. He did it because he was allowed to, all right? Because the word says if we resist the devil, he will flee from us in the book of James. Uh, Peter said in 1 Peter 5, resist him steadfastly in the faith. Uh, Ephesians 6 says that we quench all the fiery darts of the wicked with the shield of our faith. And so the point is to say that he'll try to get you to focus on what might happen or what could happen. Well, I mean, uh, there's no guarantee that you're not going to, to face a challenge or to face something that is uh, outside the realm of what you maybe thought was possible. But what I have to do is answer that circumstance. See, my job is to keep the word that God gave me in my mouth. What word did God give you? Well, the Lord said it's going to be all right. Then you keep that in your mouth. That's so important. Amen. That's why, the, for, you know, the, the, the words that the Lord uh, gives a body, that he gives this ministry at the beginning of every year. You know, we write them out. We print them out. We put them on cards for people to carry with them. Why? To keep it in their mouth. So that we're constantly saying, this is the year of gain, transition, and victory. You know, next year, uh, uh, already, we're, we're looking at next year of being, you know, the year of overflow and growth and, and abundance. I mean, these are the things that we're doing. Now, the reason this is so important is that's a word that God gave you. All right, to what? To answer the circumstance. See, this aids my praying. Because you can pray about something, but if you never answer it when it comes up, all right? He didn't say pray about the imaginations and the thoughts that come into your mind. He said to cast them down. Well, how do I cast them down? With words. By declaring what the word said. Well, this, you know, this could go wrong. No, he said it was going to go without a hitch. Uh, but the doctor said, yeah, but I'm going to not die, but I'm going to live. Yeah, but they said, you know, that you've only got, no, but the Bible says with long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. I mean, I'm constantly answering the circumstance. Amen. So my job, notice again, is to keep the word God gave me in my mouth. Now, here's a very important point. The Lord will give, direct you to specific scriptures to use and to stand on. Notice in uh, Hebrews 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 5 and 6. He says, Let your conversation or your lifestyle be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave. Now notice, this is so important because he has said, all right, there's something that the Lord has said. He has said, and notice what he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And then notice the first part of verse 6, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man will do to me. So the writer of Hebrews says, the Lord has said, so that we can say, the Lord has said so that we can boldly say. So he said what, the Lord said what he said, so we could then say what he said. So the scripture again, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, the Lord's my helper, and I'll not fear what men will do unto me. And 
So these people could be feeling like they were abandoned. They could be feeling like nobody was, was on their side. But notice what the writer said. He said, he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you so that you could say, the Lord's my helper. And I won't fear what man will do to me. Well, that goes in, in any area. I mean, you can pray about your finances, for instance. But then when the enemy starts, this is all going to fall apart. Nothing's going to go right. What if you lose your job? What if the business slows down? What if any number of what ifs? Well, there has to be something that I have seen or heard him say so that I can boldly say. Right? I mean, it's, it's not enough just say, no, that's not going to happen. Based on what? See, it has to be based on something. So I want to declare the scriptures that the Holy Spirit ministers to my heart. The scriptures that the Holy Spirit ministers to my heart. My time with the Holy Spirit is so vital. It's so important because He'll minister things to me. He'll minister scriptures to me. No matter what it may be. I was, I was dealing with a situation one time uh, with uh, the Lord was leading me in some areas where my love walk is concerned. And uh, every time I would go to the Holy Spirit, every time I would get in the Spirit and begin to pray in the Spirit, He would minister the Scripture to me. Let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. Just stay going down that road. Why is that so important? The whole Bible is inspired by the Holy Spirit, but He will declare to me the scriptures I need to be saying. And here's why. The scriptures you declare will deal with the unseen issues. There are things that I can't see. I can't see every circumstance. I can't, I can't, I can't uh, foresee every situation that might come up. But the Bible says that God did deliver, that God does deliver, and God will yet deliver. All right? So that means that God is, and we know that, and God, God is, God was, and God always is. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the God that was in my yesterday is in my today, but yet He's planning my future. And so the scriptures that the Holy Spirit gives me, they deal with unseen issues. All right? That's why it's so important to pray the scripture. When, when I pray over my children... That, Lord, I'm declaring that they will have no desire for the things of this world. I'm declaring that the Word of God is hidden and, 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 and sheltered in their heart. And at the right time, it'll come out. Well, the point is, you know, I might be praying that over a 2-year-old. I might be praying that over a 10-year-old. I might be praying that over a 30-year-old. But the point is, that Scripture's going into the future and, and working and dealing with unseen issues. All right? Now... In Proverbs 21, we'll walk through this process. That's why I'm calling this step by step. Walk through this process. In Proverbs 21, and verse 1, I'm using my circumstance. To teach this. Proverbs 21 and, or, yeah, Proverbs 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. This is the first scripture the Lord gave me in this circumstance. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. I would declare this every day. Every day I would get up and declare this, and I would put the judge's name over our case in here. Judge so-and-so's heart is in the hand of the Lord, and as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. All right, that, 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 that was the first scripture the Lord gave me. Now, whatever your circumstance may be, you're praying about it, you're believing God, but remember, God has given you, give, given you the statement that you're supposed to, to say, all right, whatever it may be. 
He told me it, it will all go without a hitch. That's how it was. Amen. Uh, then he directed, directs you to specific scriptures. Where well, here's where he began directing me to specific scriptures. So I had the saying that the Holy Spirit gave me, this is all going to go without a hitch. That's how it is. If somebody would say, well, they need this information, I would say, this is all going to go without a hitch. They say, well, we need to do a home study. It's all going to go without a hitch. And here's something that I want you to see. And then God started hooking us up with people that were in authority in our case that liked us. They thought we were good people. They, they showed us favor. All right? I remember, I remember distinctly uh, the lady when uh, you have an adoption situation going on uh, there in that state. They provide the child uh, with an attorney. All right? You have an attorney and your child has a lawyer that's on their side. Uh, and, you know, you had to go meet with her, had to take the baby, and we went and met with her, and she had to come look at our home. And, I mean, just A, B, C, D. It was just everything that, that we needed her to say. She was saying and even more, glowing terms. You know, well, here's, here's what's so important. Because instead of just praying about it, Lord, I want this to go well, here, here's the thing where a lot of people miss it. We're doing the heavy lifting. All right, we're saying what God said. It's all going to go without a hitch. And then we started declaring the judge's heart, judge so-and-so, his heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. I would insert his name in that case. All right? Uh, whatever I believe for the Lord gives you a scripture, I will not die, but I will live. All right, I will not die of cancer. I will not die of this disease. I will not die of whatever it is, but I will live and declare the works of the Lord. Why is that so important? Because I'm putting that, I'm putting the, the accuracy in there. This is what's going to happen to me. I'm just not going to get better. All right, I, I'm going to get healed and I'm going to live. I'm going to live. I'm, I'm not going to just live a little while. I'm going to live out my full days on this earth. All right. Now, in Proverbs 16, see, these are scriptures now that the Lord gave me. Proverbs 16 and verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh, here's the, the phrase, even his enemies to be at peace with him. I would declare this scripture every day and say, Father, my ways please you. And you make even my enemies to be at peace with me. See, a lot of people quote this and they'll say, well, the Lord says he'll make your enemies to be at peace with you. No, he said even your enemies will be at peace with you. In other words, everybody will be at peace with you up to and including your enemies. Hallelujah. All right. Well, the judge wasn't my enemy, so we've already got the judge covered, but there are people that could have been. You know, because everybody wasn't behind the adoption. But I'm saying even my enemies will be at peace with me. Well, what does this do? When you declare this, it quiets your enemies. It, this, this quieted the enemies. There's a soothing that comes to them when they think about you. It quiets them. I remember we got a phone call of a person that was with the situation. They said, well, you know, we don't, we don't necessarily like this, and we this, and we that. And, and, I mean, there wasn't a lot they could do about it, but the point is, is this is what I declared. My wife's on the phone with them, and I'm declaring he'll even make my enemies to be at peace with me. All right? It's not just praying. It's not just saying, Lord, you know, uh, do something about this. It's saying, it's, it's going to the Lord in prayer, what do I need to do about this? All right? And then he gives me the, the, the steps to take. Amen. Here's what happens. When you declare this, they quit thinking about you in hostile terms. Uh, a lot of people go through uh, pastors. There are pastors that go through a lot of issues that they shouldn't have to go through 
if they would be declaring these things over their people. He'll even make my enemies to be at peace with me. But when I talk to many pastors, they're always talking to me about all the people in their church that don't like them, and this person's this, and this person's that. Well, you know, to the best of my knowledge, I don't have anybody in my church that doesn't like me, or churches that don't like me. And I've had people say, well, you know, that's just a fantasy. You know, not everybody likes you. Yes, everybody likes me. Why? Because the Bible says that the Lord will even make my enemies to be at peace with me. That's what he said. And so, you understand? And so, this will help on a person's job. This will help in person, a person's relationship. Well, you know, I don't understand. Somebody at my job's got it out for me. Well, but understand what's happening when you say that. I'm strengthening their position. I'm strengthening their resolve. All those things in the spirit start getting focused on they don't like me. They don't, somebody's got it out for me. All right, it's more than just positive and negative. It's taking this principle that God gave us to change circumstances to reinforce what already is. All right, so, so every day when I get up, and that person talks to their wife. Somebody at my job's got it out for me. Or the wife talks, somebody don't like me. I don't know who it is, but, and, and then they find out, and they say it's Bob or it's Judy or whoever. They don't like me. They got it out for me. Well, <laughs> then what happens is they start strengthening their position. Amen. And you can pray about that. You can't undo what you say by what you pray. You just can't. All right, if, if you're constantly affirming it, nobody likes me. Nobody's for me. Nobody's on my side. Then you can go to the Lord and pray and say, Now, Lord, I, I need your favor today. I've got this, I've got this, and, and I, I need your favor, and I'm, I've got this meeting, and I'm meeting with this person. Now, watch, I'll insert this here. That they have been saying every day doesn't like them. And then the day before the meeting, they go and pray and say, Lord, now I need your favor today, and I need so-and-so to show me favor. But you've been saying every day for a month that they don't like you. See, you, you can't, because I'm the establishing witness. I'm, I'm, it goes, Jesus said in Mark 11, 23 and 24, I will have what I say. And he didn't just say, I'll have the good things. He said, he will have whatever he says. And so, but how much easier is it when the moment I kind of get the inclination that maybe they don't like me or, or they have something against me, I start saying, Lord, you make even my enemies to be at peace with me. Lord, I thank you that I am set on high above all nations of the earth because I'm, the, I'm a tither. I thank you that the devourer is rebuked for my sake because I'm a giver. I sow kindness and I reap kindness. And, and then I go to work, and I don't act like anything's wrong. I don't act like anything's bad. You know, I love them. I care for them. Hey, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. Would you like a cup of coffee? You know, and the point is, whether they receive it or not, whether they understand it or not, they probably won't, there's a soothing that begins to come. All right? They just can't be mad at you. All right? Why? Because the Word says, it will quiet my enemy. Amen. There's something that comes, to the, that comes to them when there's a soothing that comes to them when they think about you and they quit thinking about you in hostile terms. Notice, even my enemies, everybody, even my enemies will be at peace with me. All right? This is so important. I watched this, I watched this uh, when our grandson was born and uh, born prematurely and the doctors uh, were saying all these different things that were going on and and the heart condition that he had, and the chambers weren't formed, and, and we're going to have to do this surgery, and that surgery, and this surgery. But the first thing I did was I, I prayed in the Spirit, and the Lord gave me a verse. The Lord gave me a scripture to stand on, and, and a phrase, mighty griffin, mighty griffin. Because they kept saying, he's small, he's weak. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not our grandson. He's the seed of a tither, all right? He's mighty, he's strong. And so the scripture the Lord took me to is in the book of Proverbs where it says there's four things on the earth that are all small, but they're exceeding wise. And the Lord said, you can take that scripture, that's him. He's small, but he's strong. He's small, but he's mighty. And we got everybody saying that. There are people up there that were 
that were of different denominations, family members, they didn't understand why that they were saying it. But they, I remember standing there with uh, my daughter-in-law and her mother, wonderful, godly people. And uh, 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 her mother was there, and we were standing at the, the, the uh, oxygen, you know, the, the incubator there where they have the, the baby. And, and, of course, he was under oxygen and, and you know, was, was three months premature, no bigger, no longer than that, not as long as that Bible. And, but anyway, the point is, we were standing there, and I remember she made this statement. She said, you are mighty Griffin. That's what your grandma Michelle says. You are mighty Griffin. I don't care why she was saying it. It was an affirmation of what was being said. And so he started gaining strength. And then what did we do? We went to the next thing. What needs to happen now? Well, he needs to gain weight. Okay, he's going to be fat and flourishing. That's, that's what the Word of God says. It says the blessing will cause the children to be fat and flourishing. Now, see, the reason why this is so important, we're saying, mighty Griffin, we're declaring the exact scriptures that the Lord gave us, and we're just taking it step by step. You know, don't get wrapped up in trying to see an immediate reversal of everything. Take it step by step. All right, people miss this where their kids are concerned. You take it step by step, all right? I just want to see him saved and serving God. Well, I understand, and, and so do I. But we got to take it step by step, all right? What did the Lord say? What, what phrase did he give you about your children? We're believing in God for one of our children. And uh, when it was really bad, we were, we were believing God. We're still believing God. And the phrase the Lord gave me was this child and their name, is following the plan of God for their life. That's how you answer everything. And to this day, somebody will say, well, they're doing this. And I'll say, they're following the plan of God for their life. Why? That's the scripture the Lord gave us. Amen. Or the, the phrase that he gave us. Now, so even my enemies, that means everybody, even my enemies, up to and including my enemies, will be at peace with me. Amen. Uh, Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. This is another scripture that the Lord gave me. And I would go over these every day. Th this is important. It's not just, it's not just repetition. It is when you're saying and declaring things that the Lord told you to say, Every day you're strengthening the ability of the Word of God to work in your life when you consistently declare those things. And so Deuteronomy 28 and verse 7, The Lord will cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They'll come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. So every day I would declare this. See, your enemies will come from one direction but the Lord will cause them to run from you in seven different directions. He'll scatter them. So I would declare, Father, my enemies may come against me one way, but they'll flee from me seven ways. All right? Why is that so important? Because it doesn't matter how much unity they seem to be in. You're, go you're going to separate them. You're going to make them small, and basically you're going to turn them into bite-sized enemies. Would you be able to take them one at a time? All right, that, that's so important. Amen. Because the, the, enemy, the enemy wants to appear insurmountable. All right, that's, that's, that's why, notice this. Isn't it interesting? Now, this is just the way I think. I've trained myself to think this way. People will say, oh, I watch the news. We got a 30% chance of snow. You know what I always say? That means there's a 40% chance it won't. If there's only a 30% chance it will, there's a 40% chance it won't. Amen. That's so important. When I pull up to a, a traffic light, I call it a go light. It's not a stop light, it's a go light. I'm waiting to go. Not stopping. My, my clock is an opportunity clock. It's not an alarm clock. I'm not alarmed when it goes off. It's an opportunity. Amen. But, but <laughs> here, here, you understand? Here, here's the point. They may come against me one way, but they'll flee from me seven ways. Amen. Why? Your enemy becomes confused. 
Let, let me say, that, that's what it was. Thank you, Lord. That's why the enemy wants you focused on how big something is. And, and, and think about this for a moment. If a person goes to the doctor and the doctor says cancer, isn't it interesting that they never give you the statistics of how many people survive? Right? They say, you know, even if it's a small statistic. I was watching a commercial the other day, and they were talking about a certain illness. And they said, one in seven will get this disease. Well, you know what that means? Six didn't. I mean, it's not good that the one did. But do you see how ominous that is? And what are you thinking when you hear that? Am I one of those? Am I one of the ones? <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it has to come up in your mind. I'm one of the six. I'm one of the ones that didn't get it. Amen. The doc, somebody will go to the doctor and they'll say, well, the doctor gave me six months to live. Yeah, but the Lord gave you the option of long life until you're satisfied. I, amen. Amen. Now, we, we're not against the doctors. We appreciate the information they give us. But here's the point. It's how I respond. Somebody says, well, what if you got a diagnosis like that? How would you respond? I can tell you exactly how I would respond. I would say, Lord, is my time up? And if my time is up, now, I don't believe it is because you said long life. But if my time is up, I'm not supposed to go sick. So I'm willing to go, but I'm not going to go sick. Can I say that? Yes, I can say that. Why? Because he said, I'll take sickness and disease from your midst. It is not God's will that any of his people die sick. Amen. There's not one record in the Bible of it being God's will of people dying sick. Just not the will of God. Now, here's the point. Is it my time? If it's my time, I'll go, but I'm not going sick. So, see, that's got to be the response. But yet people will go and they'll get a diagnosis from the enemy or from, the, from the, the enemy, the doctor that the enemy will use. And instead of going and saying, Lord, what do I need to do here? They just take it. And then they come to church. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Watching online here in the building. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Then they'll come to the, doc, to the pastor and they'll tell the pastor what the doctor said. The doctor said, I've got cancer and I've only got six months to live. Now can we pray? What do we pray about? I mean, I've got to learn step by step to respond to these things on another level, in another way. When the doctor says, you've got this, and you've only got this amount of time, or it could be this, or it could be that, I've got to learn how to, okay, Holy Spirit, what do I say here? Because it's very important. First words matter, last words stand. It's important what I say. All right? I mean, no matter what. No matter what. There, there are people that immediately call their family and set their affairs in order. Well, the doctor said I got six months. Or the doctor said there's nothing they can do. But if I respond, for instance, the scripture I use. But if I say, even if I got to say it under my breath, doctor may not understand it. But if it comes out of my spirit, I will not die, but I will live and declare the works of the Lord. With long life, he'll satisfy me, show me his salvation. Jesus carried my sicknesses, bore my diseases, carried my pains. With his stripes, I'm healed. See, it's, it's, it's got to be this thing where I'm declaring this. So I would declare every day, they may come out against me one way, but they'll flee from me seven ways. That means my enemies will be confused. I want my enemies confused. If somebody's trying to, to, to do something against you, you want them to enter into a state of confusion. Why? Because then they can't think right. They can't figure out how to make things work against you. This is part of the heritage of the servants of the Lord. I want that disease that's trying to affect my body to become confused and not know how to do its job. Because that's, that's what cancer is, is, is the body turning against itself. Well, it needs to get confused and start working for me. Amen. Because that's not how God designed my cells to function. Glory to God. 
Amen. Now, don't leave this to chance. You want your enemies confused. I want them confused. I know I don't hate my enemies, but I want them confused when it comes to me. They don't know what to do. Hey, they, they don't know what to do. They, be, 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 because, you know, whether they're late, they just don't show up to court. You know, uh, they forget. You know, or, or whatever the case may be. I've seen that over and over again. Well, the, the witness just didn't show up or, or this or that or the other. And people will say, oh, no, that was the Lord confusing the enemies. See, now, I can pray about this till I'm blue in the face. Oh, Lord, I need your help here. Lord, I need your help here. What do you need me to help you do? Well, I've got this whole group that is, I remember, let me share this with you. I remember when Pastor Michelle first got saved. And, you know, everyone knows her, you know, her story, her testimony. She came out of a life of, of sin and crime. You know, like all of us, people say, Pastor, what was your background? Sinner, what was yours? I mean, that's, that's, that's. That's all of us. We were all sinners. If, if we got saved at 8 or 80, we were all sinners. But the point is, is uh, uh, she had lost custody of her children. And she would tell you, you know, you know, that that was right. She was not living right. She was, I mean, you know, strung out. And anyway, she got saved. And, of course, she wants her kids back. And so uh, she, you know, they, they give her a lawyer. And my mother went to court with her. And this was before we were married. And my mother and father were her pastor and uh, uh, went to court. And, and without exaggeration, they walked in the courtroom and there were people standing, lined up along the wall there to give testimony as to why she should not have her children. And it was her and my mother. And there might have been some other people from the church. I don't remember. But anyway, they went into the courtroom and... Uh, the, 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 the attorney for the family uh, said, you know, we, we have this and we have all these people. I don't remember how many there were, many, that are willing to testify that she's done this and she's done that. And she's, well, I mean, obviously she had. But the judge said, okay, okay, okay. He said, I want to hear from this side. And he said, uh, there were some things he'd asked her to do. Did she, has she done this? Yes. Did she attend her classes? Yes. Uh, did she pay off all of her fines? Yes. Did she, uh, I believe it was, get her license back? Yes. Does she have a place to live? Yes. Has a home study been done? Yes. Does she have furniture? Yes. Does she have a job? Yes. And the judge said, okay, I don't need to hear from anybody on your side. And he gave her kids back. Nobody even got to say anything. They didn't even get to say anything. Why? They'll come out against you one way and flee from you seven ways. They'll just be confused. And they'll walk out going, how'd that happen? They have no idea. You know how it happened, though. Amen. Glory to God. That's why it's always a wonderful thing to go into a doctor's office and have them uh, uh, examine you one point and then a week later examine you again and come back in the room going, I don't understand. Because what was there is not there because you've taken the time to hear from the Holy Spirit, what do I need to say? What scriptures do I need to stand on? Amen? Now, Deuteronomy 33, and I'm just walking you through this. This is the purpose of this study, is to take this hour and really just break down some of these things that are going to help us live successfully. Deuteronomy 33 and verse 27. The eternal God is my refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he will thrust out the enemy from before me, and will say, destroy them. Now notice, I would say, I would go over this, I would go through this every day. Lord, you're my refuge. Your everlasting arms are holding me up. You are driving my enemies out from before me. So important. He will thrust out your enemy from before you and will say, destroy them. Now, people say, well, I don't want anybody destroyed. Well, no, neither do I, but I want their plots destroyed. I want, you know, in the Old Testament, you know, the Bible says, hate your enemies. You know, now, over in the New Testament, we're told to love everybody. But we're still supposed to hate our enemies. 
Now, that's not flesh and blood. That is things like poverty, sickness. Dece I, we should hate it. I hate poverty. I hate sickness. I, I hate dissension. God, notice, God drives out my enemies. God holds me up. God preserves me. So if I go in there, into that courtroom setting, or into that doctor's office, and it's just me, notice what, notice the issue. God is my refuge. God is underneath. Hallelujah. His everlasting arms. So, you know what that's referencing? God's everlasting, non-ending, eternal strength is what's holding me up. That's why Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ. It's His eternal strength. God drives out my enemies from before me. And then verse 29, I would say this every day. Happy are you, O Israel, who is like unto you, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of your help, who is the sword of your excellency, and your enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and you shall tread upon their high places. Now, I would go through this every day, and I would say, happy are Philip and Michelle. Happy. See, it says Israel and O people, but I put me in there. Happy are Philip and Michelle. Why? I would, I would go through this. We're saved by the Lord. Then I would say, the Lord is the shield of my help. I would say, the Lord is the sword of my excellency. I would say, our enemies are found to be liars. Hallelujah. That's what I would declare every day. Now, here's something that's important. I would declare those specific scriptures that the Lord led me to. These. I wouldn't add to them. Why? I, would, I said exactly and specifically what the Lord gave me. This is what the Lord gave me for this circumstance. See, you should quote Scripture and you should quote Scripture a lot. But I don't want to just have a Scripture on the tip of my tongue that's just generic to me. All right? That that's, Scripture begins to lose its power. All right? My grandmother used to quote this all the time. Well, you know, cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, that's not a scripture. I mean, that's not in the Bible. You know? Hallelujah. <laughs> how, how, how about this one? Well, the Lord works in mysterious ways His wonders to perform. Well, that's not a scripture. It's not in the Bible. Amen. But the point is, is you'll talk to a lot of people, and because they think this is faith, You'll say, how are you doing? Oh, blessed, doing fine, everything's going my way. Well, I understand that. Is that what God told you to say? That's, that's so important. When uh, Pastor Caldwell and Sister Jeannie Caldwell were hit right out here on Markham, a tire truck, their Cadillac, they were driving a car, in it, and the computer shut the engine down. First year they had computer, tire truck hit them. And, and you've all, many of you have heard that story, knocked the car 38 feet broke both the seats they ended up in the back seat uh, long story short her back was broken in three places uh, I mean it was just carnage when Pastor Caldwell started coming to somebody was knocking on on the glass amazing there was some glass left and said hey are, are y'all okay are you okay are you all right and he said I started to answer and the Holy Spirit said be very careful how you respond and he said I had to think about it and he said, I measured my words and said, we will be fine. Notice he didn't say, we're all okay, everything's great. We will be fine. All right? Now, people will say, well, what's the difference? I don't know. Other than I know this, that's, that's what the Lord specifically told him to say. All right? I don't know what doors I'm going to open if I'm not saying specifically what the Lord told me me to say all right I've got to be saying exactly what God told me to say so I didn't add to him I stayed with what the Lord specifically gave me now 
Then, so that's the second thing. Thirdly, step by step, thirdly, take the stand of faith and refuse to be moved. Take the stand of faith and refuse to be moved. In uh, 1 Timothy 6.12, you know this verse perhaps by heart, but it says uh, in 1 Timothy 6.12, Paul told Timothy, he said, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Now notice, it's a fight of faith, not a fight for faith. I'm not fighting for faith, it's a fight of faith. And we're called to this fight. We fight with faith. We lay hold and confess. Notice what he said. He said, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto you're called, and have professed a good profession among many witnesses. So we, we fight with faith, we lay hold, and we confess. Our stand is one of believing and speaking and refusing to alter our heart and our mouth to fit the situation. Our stand is one of believing and speaking, refusing to alter my heart and my mouth to fit the circumstance. Hallelujah. And then I have to hold that. Ephesians 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. i got to hold fast to it. Why? Because he's faithful, reliable, sure, faithful to his word. So you hold the declaration, hold the confession, the acknowledgement of the truth. Yes, this is what they're saying could happen, but this is the truth. That's what I acknowledge. People will say, well, you can't ignore the circumstance. Well, I'm not ignoring it. I just refuse to acknowledge it as having the upper hand. That's so important. Well, but they said you could die, right? But the Bible says I can live. See, it goes back to that 30, 40% chance. 30% chance it's no, 40% chance it won't. Doctor said there's a 10% chance you'll die. Well, there's a 90% chance I'll live. It's, it's what I'm choosing to acknowledge. This is, I choose to acknowledge. See, this makes my praying easier because then I go to pray and I can pray with confidence. The enemy fights real hard to get people over into condemnation and shame or to push them over into what I call silliness because both of them rob our confidence. Both of them. If I'm in guilt and condemnation, you know, as a parent, I've got to lose all guilt and condemnation about what my adult children have done. Because I can't pray for them in faith if I don't. I, I've got to lose that. And that's what the enemy wants to push me over into. So that I cannot pray with confidence. But when I am... Confident in who I am in Christ, I'm confident in what the Word of God says, then that's when I acknowledge the truth. This is what the truth says. This is what I acknowledge. This is what I base what I believe on. Not on my upbringing, not on what I learned in the church that I grew up in, not on what Grandma taught and I bought. It, 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 it's, it's based on what does the Word of God say. Amen. You know, that... There are people that quote things and they quote it like scripture. Well, you know, the Lord won't, you know, uh, uh, you win a few, you lose a few. That's not a scripture. <laughs> That's not a scripture. Right? Well, the Lord said he won't give you, put more on you than you can bear. That's not a scripture. He's, he said the Lord will not tempt, allow you to be tempted above that you are able and will with the temptation give you a way out of it. Amen. I, you know, I've heard people say this. I, I, remember, I remember people, and you know, they'll get real serious about it. You'll have a couple bad things go on, and they'll go, well, you know, and they'll look around. Bad things come in threes. So, you know, you got one more, and then you'll be done. That's not a scripture. right? I mean, I can't acknowledge that. 
And people say, but how do, you, how do you account for this bad thing that happened to you? Here's what the Bible says. Here's how I account for it. The sun rises on the just and the unjust. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. There's time that life happens. But what we do is when life happens, we take the Word of God and acknowledge it and change it. I, I cannot sit here and tell you that I will never face a challenge. I can tell you that I'll take that challenge step by step and just overcome it. That's what we do. You know, I asked a person one time, they said, how am I going to do all this? I said, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That's how you do it. I mean, you know, elephant's big, looks huge. One bite at a time. So we take it one bite at a time. Amen. And that's what we did here. That's what we did. The heart of the king is in the Lord's hand. We had our statement. Amen. Glory to God. Let me hurry so I can get done here. Amen. You know, James says, and you'll remember James 1, verse 6 through 8. Let's run over there real quick. We'll read this real quick. But uh, because this is, this is where we're taking the stand of faith and refusing to be moved. So he's given us the word to speak. Uh, it'll go without a hitch. He's given us our scriptures. Now we've got to take the stand of faith and refuse to be moved. James 1, verse 6, it says, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. He that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he'll receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Now, I want you to understand, that is in there for informational purposes. And I want you to understand what I mean by that. He's not saying that's you. He's not saying that you waver or that you're not going to receive anything from the Lord or that you're double-minded. He's saying that's possible. And he's saying don't be that way. All right, because verse uh, uh, 6 tells us if you've asked in faith, nothing wavering, right? Verse 5 says that what you ask for will be given to you because you've asked in faith with nothing wavering. And then he explains what a wavering man's like. He didn't say that was you. Waver just simply means to, you know, to become unsteady, to feel or to show indecision. I, I don't want to show indecision. Once I've said something, that's how it's going to be. What, what do you believe? I'll ask people that. They'll say, well, you know, Pastor, I, I got this, and, and would you pray with me about it? Well, first of all, what do you believe? What do you believe about that? Because that's, that's what we've got to go off of. We may have to change how you believe. Amen. Verse 8 in the Amplified says, that the man that's double-minded is unstable, unreliable, and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels, or decides. Everything. Now, this is so important because you've got all of this ammunition. You're saying what God told you to say. You're declaring those scriptures, and now you're in the stand of faith. Now, a steadfast person receives. Steadfast. An unmovable person's, or a, a, an, an, a, a movable person is unstable. An unmovable person is stable in all of their ways. And as I'm wrapping this up, you got to understand that, you know, you're going to feel the pressure of the circumstance. You're going to feel the pressure of the situation. But here's what I've learned. That's no indication of anything. It's just pressure. It's just, it is what it is. I mean, pressure is no problem. You know, I mean, you, you see people and, uh, you know, they fall apart uh, from the pressure of whatever they got to face or whatever. And then you see somebody else and they just make it. Well, what was the difference? One refused to give in to the pressure. The other one didn't. Well, you never overcome that pressure without something that the Lord, the steps the Lord gave you to overcome it. it when, he, when the pressure of what might happen would come, what would come into my spirit was, no, it's all going to go without a hitch. 
and then I would go back over those scriptures. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is my, my sword, right? The Lord causes my enemies to be at peace with me. The Lord causes my enemies to become confused and run away from me. Well, why was that so important? Because all those things had to be put in place before we ever went back to court. Had to be. All right? And I remember the day we went into court. I remember the day we went in. And from the time we went through the door, from the time we went through the door to the time we left, it was exactly 20 minutes. Nobody showed up to dispute what we were doing. Nobody showed up to argue against it. Nobody. I mean, they, the, the person, the people they needed to find that could have said something, they couldn't even find them. Are, were they still alive? Yeah, I've talked to them after the adoption. I did. But, but the point is, now why, why was that? It wasn't because I'm a pastor. It wasn't because I'm so great. I mean, I am great, but, you know, not because I'm so wonderful, but because step by step. So, as I'm closing, if you're dealing with something, first of all, I need to find out from the Lord, how do I need to approach this? Because it's not just one size fits all. Well, I'm just going to declare the word, and the word's going to take care of it. Okay, but wait a minute. What is the Lord telling you to say? It could be one scripture. It could be two scriptures. It, it could be one thing specifically that is the key to that whole circumstance. And for us, it was beginning with, this is all going to go without a hitch. The heart of the king is in the Lord's hands. The Lord will make even your enemies to be at peace with you. Your enemies will come out one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will be your shield, so on and so forth. And then you get that together, and then you do what we said here at the end. You take the stand of faith and refuse to be moved. That's my part. I have to refuse to be moved. All right, the word will work if I will not be moved away from it. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's pray today. So Father, we have come and we have heard the word today, and we have understood, Father, that according to your word, there are things you want to show us and things that you want to reveal to us. And so we take our position now in prayer. And Lord, those things that we're believing to be delivered from, healed from, set free from, Lord, those family members that may need a deeper knowledge and understanding and comprehension of you, Lord, we take our stand in prayer and we say, Lord, show us what we need to be saying. Show us the scriptures that we need to be declaring. And give us the insight and the comprehension that we need. And Father, then help us to take our stand of faith and refuse to be moved. Now, Lord, we thank you for it. I thank you for every person here under the sound of my voice. I thank you for every individual watching online. And I declare according to the truth of the word of God. You said that when we heard the word, faith comes by hearing the word. And I thank you that faith has arisen and that faith is growing and faith is moving in the hearts of these hearers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for watching online. We will be back next Wednesday at 12 p.m. noon again for another great pastor study. And by the way, if you're in the Little Walk area, we will be here tonight at 7 o'clock for a great service here at 10500 Markham. Uh, if you're not in Little Rock, you're somewhere else, you can still watch us online. And uh, God will bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us.